Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Extreme Performance Series video blog. I'm very excited to be bringing another one of my peers uh, on air with us today. Hi, I'm Venu Tiwari. I'm part of VCF Performance Automation Team, and I've been part of VMware from more than a little more than three years. When I joined VMware, this project did not exist. Yet. So it started with me. So I'm, it, it's kind of my baby. So I'm very happy to present it today. The performance automation team here uh, is, a, is a group of folks, and we, we go looking, obviously, at workloads, and we regression track, and we f find ways to optimize. And so uh, this team that you're a part of here is really about ensuring amazing platform performance for us. I'm going to talk about how we track the performance of virtualized GPU on vSphere using automation. I'm also going to present some very interesting data as a result of this automation. NVIDIA provides a way to virtualize physical GPUs, which is called NVIDIA Grid GPUs. The virtualization itself is provided by NVIDIA and cloud infrastructure is provided by VMware. Because of the VMware cloud infrastructure backing, features like vMotion and high availability can be used with NVIDIA Grid GPUs. One implementation of virtualization is vGPU or virtual GPUs, which allows for a user to share physical GPUs among multiple virtual machines or containers. There are time-sliced virtual instances of GPUs that split the overall memory of the GPU while sharing other resources such as processor threads, IO paths, and caches in a time-sliced manner. There is another implementation of these NVIDIA grid GPUs, which is called multi-instance GPUs or MIG. In this mode, the partitioning happens in such a way that each physical GPU can have multiple individual instances with their own memory and other resources such as processing threads, caches, IO pathways, etc. Unlike what we saw in virtual GPUs, all these things, all the other resources are not shared. Each slice has its own dedicated set of resources along with the memory. So there can be a maximum of seven slices with multiple combination of memory partitioning. One example of a profile type in A100 GPU is A100-780C. As you can see, in this naming convention, C stands for compute. AT is the memory of the GPU in that profile in GBs, and 7 is the total number of slices in that profile. A second example, A100-Grid-80C, is the naming convention for time-sliced virtual GPUs where we are not specifying the slices and only specifying the memory of the GPU that is available in that profile. One A100 physical GPU should be equivalent to A100 virtual GPU and A100 mix 780C virtual GPU. Ideally, all these should be equivalent. There is a slight difference in performance that can be observed due to the algorithms that are used to implement each, each type of virtualization. This performance difference can be uh, de can depend on the factors like input load or the workload type. The multiple predefined memory combinations are predefined for a type of GPU and can be accessed after installing the NVIDIA web on the ESXi host and NVIDIA driver or partner driver on the VM. I will be extensively using these combinations as MIG and vGPU profiles in the rest of the presentation. There's a lot of opportunity for configuration and flexibility. And certainly this is something we want to look at uh, behind the scenes, you know, in our automation platform, look at all the various scenarios our customers could be using. We first need to understand the problems before the said automation was implemented. As part of VCF performance engineering, significant amount of performance work has been done, but there were some gaps identified with respect to ESXi release to release performance tests. In order to overcome these gaps, we came up with a solution of automation framework, which covers the tests with larger test scenarios on a higher frequency of build-to-build -build coverage in a release cycle. While onboarding a new workload, one-time effort is required, and for the VM setup as we have dedicated test beds on dedicated hardware resources. Isolation is a key aspect of performance measurement, as, there is, as the tests will be running regularly in an automated manner. Dedicated test beds provide complete isolation. What are some of the performance tests and the coverage that we're looking at? In the first column, we have a list of machine learning workloads that we are running on regular basis. 
in order to generate essential performance data. The classes of workloads are varied like we have object detection workload like MASCAR CNN and sanity tests with some of the CUDA samples. We have BERT for NLP, uh, meaning natural language processing, and we also introduce LAMA2, which is a generative AI workload. In the second column, we have various types of test profiles that we are covering. With this automation framework, we are able to achieve this level of in-depth coverage for all major GPU profiles in both time slice and MIG modes. From the third and fourth column, we can see that we are also scaling in terms of number of GPUs on each VM and the number of VMs sharing one GPU, addressing multiple GPUs and multi-VM concurrent test scenarios. In one of the test bits with BERT workload, we have also in included NVLink tests. NVLink communication is much faster than the communication between the multiple GPUs via PCIe on a VM. We're confident in our performance because we're looking at all of these scenarios, right? So when we know our customers are going to be, you know, virtualizing these MLAI workloads, we've done the homework and assessed so many different scenarios and profiles and characteristics. Uh, again, it should lead our customers to be really confident with this platform. We have a utility called Maestro, which is used to trigger the daily tests on the dedicated test bits by issuing a fresh installation of ASXi on the host. There is a driver VM separate from the main test bits, which takes the trigger from the maestro and starts individual workloads on different test bits concurrently. At present, we have three test bits. Once a workload gets triggered on a host sequentially, test scenarios are executed such that each test scenario has its own vGPU profile. We have approximately 8 to 10 hours of dedicated runtime on each host every day. The results of these tests are, tests are posted on internal dashboard utility, which allows a user to do continuous monitoring against the GA baseline data and study build-to-build -build performance, enabling us to catch performance regressions caused by the latest code changes. So with the, all that automation framework in place, uh, what does it look like? Share some of the results with us. Let us proceed with some of the latest LAMA2 results that are generated on latest vSphere GA release. This slide highlights the advantage of virtual GPUs with generative AI workloads such as LAMA2. We have used MIG mode in all of the tests. Uh, just a reminder, MIG mode is a multi-instance CPU mode with um, instant, each instance having its own resources. So we have used MIG mode in all of the tests that graphs show the throughput of the workload by scaling up VMs from one to two, two to three on different types of input loads. And that is the input batch size. 32 and 64 are the input tokens and 100 is the number of output tokens in a sequence. This graph summarizes that the throughput increases by scaling up the number of VMs, even though we do not increase the number of GPUs in the environment. We have kept the GPU to be one, which is the minimum value. And yet we see increase in the cumulative throughput when, when we increase the number of VMs. So let us look at this behavior in details in this chart. As you can see, we have the data from single VM, where the VM has one whole GPU to itself. We have the data from two VMs where we divide that one GPU into two, and we achieve higher cumulative throughput. And we have two VMs with 40 GB memory each. This is again replicated in a more, in gr more granularity in the case of three VMs, where we divide up one GPU into three instances and add it up to three separate VMs. Note that we are concurrently running three VMs with Llama 2 7 billion model and keeping the input load, input and output load same across one VM, two VM, and three VM scenarios. The cumulative performance of multiple VMs sharing one single GPU is approximately 22 to 30% better than that of a single VM having a full A100 GPU capacity. Here in this chart, we see how GPU profiles are assigned to each VM, adding it to the same capacity as one whole physical GPU. I think that's a really interesting result because if I hear what you're telling me, it's the fact that our idea of scaling out using more VMs on the same single piece of physical hardware increases ultimate throughput, right? So this would be an interesting scenario as compared to bare metal. Virtualization is actually valuable in this case, correct? 
Absolutely. And you can see it. We are increasing the number of VMs. We are not reducing the load. We are not adding one single piece of hardware, one single piece of additional GPU in these scenarios. And yet we are seeing better performance. The catch is we see slightly higher latency, but then that's a decision for the customer to take because if, uh, if a user expects lesser latency, they can still go ahead with the single GPU and single VM. But if uh, throughput is the priority uh, and you can uh, leverage a little bit of latency, this is the way to go. Now, let us look at some data from a single VM. We have added smaller MIG profiles on a single VM for each test type and added the latency and throughput for each test in these charts. As you can see, the throughput is highest with the largest capacity profile and latency is lowest. Meanwhile, Throughput is gradually decreasing as we decrease the profile size and latency increases as well. Well, I think that's some great data to kind of show uh, exactly how we're looking at these workloads and how we expect our customers to run them. Um, what do you think we're going to do for the future? So there is much more that is planned to be added as part of the automation coverage. At present, we are covering A100 GPUs, but there are many more GPUs that are planned, more variety of GPUs that are planned to be added in the test pits. This will allow us to cover more diverse type of workloads in the future. The above results also, also show data from non-quantized Lama 2 modules. So current development is in progress to add quantization on Lama 2 modules. And the automation will allow us to use even lesser GPU resources and try out even smaller GPU profiles with lesser memory footprint. There are, there are additional variations of the generative AI that keep coming every day and that, that adds another dimension and more accuracy to the workload. So we have plans to add that as well in the coverage. It is a very changing space, as you point out, right? Uh, there's new, new workloads and new ideas and new technology constantly happening. Thank you for giving us a sneak peek into what we do behind the scenes uh, to look at all the various workloads and how we regression uh, test and um, make sure that this platform is the right platform for our customers and is, is highly performant. Uh, thank you, Venu, for the, the inside look there. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us for this uh, Extreme Performance Series video blog. I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Cheers.